Good evening, everyone. Pastor Tom here. Thanks for being here tonight. So do you remember the the time, if, if you're uh, old enough, the time before GPS? Do you remember actually uh, driving in a car somewhere where you didn't know where you're at, maybe a big city, and you have all these turn-by-turn -turn directions copied down on a napkin, and somehow the directions were wrong, and you, you don't have GPS, so you're really lost. Do you remember that? You had somewhere to go, some appointment, some interview, somewhere to be at, and you were really, really lost. Well, tonight is entitled, What Do You Do When You're Lost? And I'm not talking about being lost in a car tonight. I'm talking about feeling like you're lost in life. And sometimes uh, that can be for a day or two, and sometimes you can go through entire seasons of life where you feel like the person in the picture, if you can see the picture, you, you feel like you're in a fog or you're walking into a fog and you're really not sure which way that you're supposed to turn, which way you're supposed to go. So let's talk about that. Here's what I'd like to do uh, to begin with, and that is just simply for us all to take a step back and realize that we all get lost from time to time. So tonight, if if you are, if you're joining in and you're really feeling lost, I, I want you to know that that it happens. It happens to every single one of us, and you're not the only one if you're feeling that way tonight. Yes, it's humbling when you get lost, um, because all of us have this idea that we are supposed to know where we're going because we're smart, intelligent people, we're adults, and we're supposed to know. But you know the reality, and the reality is that none of us really know. I mean, we don't know one second past this one what's really going to happen in life. We really don't know as much as we want to think that we know. We're really not in control as much as we think that we are. And so sometimes life just has a way of reminding us that we're not in control. And it is humbling, especially if you're in a position where you feel like you're supposed to have the answers. You're a parent you know, you're supposed to have the answers for your child. You're a grandparent. You're an employer. Um, you know, you feel the responsibility of all the employees underneath you. Um, you're a teacher. You're um, a nurse. You know, patients need the answers. Um, you're a minister. I can remember coming out of college and being in, in this position where people expected me to have the answers. And I didn't, and I still don't. But it took a while to admit that, that even though I was trained in scripture, I don't even understand every part of the Bible. You know, I don't certainly don't understand God. Uh, totally and at times much at all and and yet when um when you're in that position of having to feel like you're in the answer position it's hard to admit it that you don't really know everything um and yet it's powerful this is what i want to talk to you about here briefly tonight 
that being in a position of coming to uh, the realization and the honest humility that you don't know what's going on, being in that position as a believer puts you in a very powerful position, not because you have power, but now God can have real power in you. And that's what I want to talk about here. And and then thirdly, I just want to remind you as, as we kind of step back and realize that we all get lost, that again, this is just reality. But here's what here's what we, we tend to think uh, when we're going through that hard time. Uh, we, we tend to feel like we are the only one that's dealing with this situation. Um, my uh, slides, for some reason, aren't wanting to, to change, but you might have them on, on uh, Facebook. If not, I'm going to just talk you through it. Um, we... We get this idea that we're the only one who is lost. You're the only one at work that's lost. You're the only one that's um, ever been in this like position before. Um, you're the only one who has taken this wrong path before. You're the only one who has made this type of decision that has put you in this situation. So I just want to... I want you to understand that this is just a part of reality, not only that you're going to be lost, but that you will inevitably think that you're the only one who is lost. But trust me in this, you're not. There's a whole world full of people. There's more people at work then you realize that are lost in life. There's there's more people at church. There's more people um, in your situation. Again, everybody's really kind of lost, but there are more people than you realize that really, truly just have no idea what's going on right now in their life. Speaking of no idea what's going on, I'm going to see for a moment if I can uh, get my slides to work and um it's just not wanting wanting to uh to go forward on me so i'm about ready to give up on it and i shall officially give up all right so let's talk about what to do when you are feeling lost. First, just back up. I, I've already said um, that everybody gets lost. Yes, it's humbling, but it can be a very powerful position that you're in if you're feeling lost. It's just reality. I've already said that you probably feel like you're the only one who's feeling this way, but trust me, you're not. So, what do you do when you're lost? Here's an expression that I've heard for many years. You may have heard it, may not have, but the expression is this. If you don't know which way to turn, don't turn. If you don't know which way to turn, don't turn. If you're feeling lost tonight, I understand that as human beings, what we want to do is we want to keep on walking, or some of us might feel like running. At least we're moving, we think. At least we're doing something. And so we we keep on searching. We keep on moving. We're trying to, to just figure out what to do while we are moving. But that expression says, uh, if you feel like you don't know which way to turn, don't turn. See, I just can't give up on things here. I, I'm I, I thought it was popping back up the, my slides on me, but it's not. Um, there is a passage of scripture that 
is really interesting, and it's Psalm 121, verses 1 and 2. And I want to read it to you because it is a scripture for those of us who are lost or feel lost or um, from time to time feel that way. Listen to it. It goes like this. Uh, again, it's Psalm 121, 1 and 2. It says, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. So here the psalmist is saying, uh, really, this is a scripture about being lost. It's a scripture Again, I'm not talking about physically being lost, but I'm talking about those times in life where you just can't figure out the next step. You just can't figure out what's going on. The psalmist says what he does. He says, I lift my eyes to the mountains. Now, where does my help come from? My help, he says, comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Sometimes as a minister, I feel like some people are saying, that's what you always say. I mean, that's always the answer for everything, like God. Like, you're, you know, if you don't know which way to turn, turn to God. Well, the truth is, um, that is the answer. I, I was just I was just uh, with a group of kids tonight for our um, our opening night of Faith Weaver. And so the, the question was asked, um, who made Noah's Ark? And a little boy raises his hand and uh, he says, Jesus. And and why did he say Jesus? Because it seems like Jesus is always the answer to every question that's asked. You know, if, it, if you don't know, the pretty it's a good chance you can say Jesus and get it right when you're a little kid. But that is the answer that I'm going to give you tonight because Jesus is always the ultimate answer. Um, when we don't know which way to turn, don't turn. But the psalmist says, instead, he looks up. Again, I'm going to read it for you. Psalm 121, 1 and 2. I lift my eyes to the mountains. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. Exactly one month ago today. Denise and I were at the Detroit Tigers game. And on the way, you know, there we, we parked in the parking garage, came out of the parking garage, and um, we walked a little bit down a sidewalk. And I, I wanted to see what street we were on to make sure I could write it down or, you know, put it on a paper or something so I could know how to get back there. And so what I did was there was a street sign coming up and I lifted my head up just a little bit and my eyesight up just a little bit to be able to see that sign. And unfortunately, there was a curb that was just a foot or so away. And so I'm looking up to the sign and I miss the whole curb thing and I fall flat down on my chest, on my right side, ended up, doctor told me later, I broke a rib. So I've, you know, had a broken rib for, for a month. But the moral of the story here is that if you're looking up, it's not a good idea to keep walking. So what the psalmist is actually saying is, if you don't know which way to turn, look up to God. And, you know, for certain, you're going to want to stop walking because there might be a curve or something. If you're looking up, you better not be walking. So the idea is if you don't know what to do, if you're feeling lost today, stop walking. Don't go to the right, don't go to the left, don't go straight, don't go back. Stop walking and look up. And you say, but I'm a mom, I'm an employer, I've got to make a decision. I've got to do something. I don't know what I'm what I'm supposed to do. Here's what I want to tell you. 
that God will give you the next right thing to do. The next thing to do, God will give you. You won't know, uh, you won't be able to see the whole street ahead of you. You won't be able to see uh, a block or a half a block or several steps, but God will give you the next thing that you're supposed to do and he'll do it in time. So if you don't know which way to go, stop doing all the running and the exploring in all directions and listening to, you know, to, to every, um, uh, everything on, on the internet or, you know, every webinar or reading all everything you can just to, because our natural tendency is, is to try to figure it out. If you really don't know which way to go, God wants you to go stop walking and making all these big decisions and spending all this money and everything. Stop and look up, which means take time each day to reconnect with God. Get in scripture, take a moment, pray, let God show you the next step. Eventually, he'll lift you back out of that fog and you'll be high enough to where you can see several steps probably and and be able to feel better about things. But for right now, I promise you, if you just stop walking and you look up, he will give you the next step. Even if the next step literally is just, you know, the next hour or the next six hours, God is going to show you the next right thing to do. But you got to quit all the running and going in every direction. So that's Psalm 121 verses one and two. I want to also um, encourage you now to not fight lostness, but listen to it and let it teach you. And here's the thing. Sometimes God leads you into lost. I mean, how does Psalm 23 go? I mean, it talks about going into the valley, but that God is right there with you. In other words, God um, could have stopped you, but God's right there with you, right by your side, leading you into the valley. Sometimes we're led into lost. Sometimes it's of our own doing. And even if it's that reason tonight, I still want to encourage you. Yeah, it's humbling, but it can be very powerful. It's reality. God's there for you. God's going to help you. But then sometimes God intentionally leads you into lost. When you feel lost, uh, I want to give you some uh, reasons uh, for my own life. Sometimes God leads you into lost, and then sometimes um, we kind of get ourselves into lost. I'm just going to give you some of my things, and there are a million others. Uh, But sometimes uh, we feel lost when we're grieving because things didn't work out the way we wanted. Because we are such planners by nature. I mean, some of us are more geared to that than others. But all of us want to feel like we know what's going on and feel like we're in control of our life. And when things don't go as we had planned, um, they don't turn out like we had thought they would. Then there is this feeling of just being lost. like. My plans didn't work out. What am I going to do now? What I want you to understand is stop, look up, relax, breathe. God will give you the step that you are supposed to take. But just stop and relax. But sometimes uh, we get that feeling of being lost because what we had planned didn't work out. Maybe that's you tonight. Sometimes we feel like we're lost when we are reading off of someone else's script. We've been doing everything the way someone else says that we're supposed to do it. And then 
you just realize one day that that's not working for me because that's not what I'm supposed to be. And look, I've, I've struggled with that in life. Um, here's another feeling, uh, a reason why you might feel lost tonight. We are constantly viewing everybody else's Facebook timeline. Now that's not mine necessarily. I don't, I'm not one who's watching everybody's Facebook timeline, but then that might be your struggle that you're feeling lost because, you know, people always try to project this image of everything great. And, you know, they show you the best things of their life. And so it makes you feel lost. But whether it's Facebook or not, uh, we can get into this idea of watching everybody else's life and thinking that um, ours is supposed to be like that. Or maybe you have your own timeline in your head of where you should be right now in life. And it hasn't worked out that way. And so you're feeling lost. I'll get one more idea of, of why we sometimes lead our own self into lostness is this. Um, when we can't even pretend like we're in control anymore, we feel lost. All of us want to have this, um, we want to project this idea that we're in control, but you can't always be in control. You can't always have life planned out and figured out. Life is life. Life happens. Weird stuff happens. And and there's times you might be at that place right now where you can't even pretend anymore that you're, you've got things figured out. Well, I just want to tell you it's okay. Relax. And let this be a gift for you. Because it very well could be that God has forced you to stop. And in that time now of, of being still, where this is what I'm encouraging you to do, be still and look up to God. And this time, it'll give you a chance to focus or to refocus. So I want you to see this as a gift. All right, some closing thoughts here are this that when you feel lost, be encouraged because so often the path is closer than you think. And it's just a matter of time. It's just a, a matter of God kind of redirecting you, picking you up and placing you over here or over, over there. You might actually be a lot closer than you think. We think that when we're lost, we are so far gone that we'll never get back. We'll never find a solution. We're, it, we're just hopeless. I mean, like, you know, you can't get there from here, map. That's the way we feel. But I, I want to encourage you, you're probably not as far off as you think. It won't take that much for God to get you back on the right path, but you need to be patient and wait for God to show you that next right step. I, and I mean, right, like correct, next correct step. All right, here's another uh, thought in closing. When you feel lost, your emotions lie to you. It was, um, uh, uh, what was his name? Uh, James, um, the, uh, the, uh, the author and um, Christian counselor, James, I uh, can't remember, his, uh, what's his name? If you, if, if, you're, if you can think of who I'm talking about, you might type it in. Um, uh, focus on the family, that guy. Uh, Jim, 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 uh, Jim, Jim, Jim. That guy. Uh, he said in one of his books that our emotions lie to us 50% of the time. And I have found that to be true. But what I want to tell you tonight is that when you are feeling lost, your emotions lie to you probably 78, uh, 70 to 80% of the time. You know, the, it, it, Dobson, thank you, Denise. <laughs> Jim Dobson said that. James Dobson. Um, all right, here's, here's another thought. 
if you're feeling lost, it's okay. And actually you should, you should be scared if you never feel lost. Because if you never feel lost in life, you've got issues. Because you, you've, you really have convinced yourself that you're in control and that you know everything and that's not true. So if you're lost, just relax. It's okay. A couple more thoughts. One of them is this. Don't let lostness cause you to believe that you will never find your way again. I just want to encourage you that from my own experience um, with God, trusting in God, you will find your way. You will, you will feel better in time. It, it will be better again. There'll be brighter days. There are brighter days ahead. And then this, remember whose you are, H, uh, W-H-O-S-E. Remember whose you are. If you're feeling lost, sometimes, a lot of times we feel lost because of um, what we don't know. But sometimes we're, we're feeling lost because of what we have forgotten. And so I want to remind you tonight that to remember this, that you are God's child and you are in God's hand. You are in the palm of his hand, even if you're feeling lost. You are still in God's hand. Uh, I'm going to close with this. There, do you remember that, that old uh, Negro spiritual? He's got the whole world in his hands. And um, as, as, as the slaves were singing that together, working in the cotton fields or wherever they were at, and, and life was so out of control, life was basically taken away from them. And nothing seemed like they could, you know, they couldn't control anything. It was, everything was spinning out of order. So one day they, they start singing this song. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole wide world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. And how encouraging that must have been for them as they felt lost, but to think that there's a God who has the whole world, the whole world in his hands. Thanks, Betty Ann. And then, it, then the, the song goes on, and, and it says, he's got the itsy bitsy baby in his hands. He's got the itsy bitsy baby in his hands. He's got the itsy bitsy baby in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. And those, those slaves who had little babies, not only are they struggling with the fact that their life feels out of control and they're feeling lost, but their baby's life, they don't know their baby's future. Their baby's in the hands of someone else. And they're saying, even my little baby is in God's hands. And then the song goes on and it says, you and me, brother, are in his hands. He's got you and me, brother, in his hands. And then it ends with, he's got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got you and me, sister, in his hands. He's got the whole world in his hands. So if you're lost, if you're feeling lost tonight, the psalmist says to look up. Stop walking. You can't look up and walk at the same time. Stop walking. Psalm 121, 1 and 2, I lift my eyes to the mountains. This is what I'm going to encourage you to do tonight before you go to bed. I'm going to encourage you to do this tomorrow in the morning and at lunchtime in the evening. Lift your eyes. Stop feeling like you got to have it all figured out. Lift your eyes Ask yourself, where does my help come from? 
Well, my help comes from the Lord, the maker, not only of me, but of all heaven and earth, because he's got the whole world in his hands and he has it figured out and he will show me the next right, correct step to make so I can breathe and relax and enjoy being a child of God. It's going to be okay if you're feeling lost. Hey, thanks for joining me tonight for Midweek Connection. Uh, Deb, thanks for joining me, uh, Betty Ann and Denise and Lisa, um, Dee and Lauren, Kevin, thanks for being here, and Lori and um, I'm sure others, and, and there'll be lots of other people who'll be listening to the recording of this. Thank you again for listening, and I hope to see you again next week for Midweek Connection.